Microlock 2 Introduction The electronic interlocking system consists of an interlocking logic, output relay rack and control units like control come indication panel and visual display unit. The Microlock 2 electronic interlocking system is manufactured by Ansaldo STS, formerly known as Union Switch and Signals. This system offers direct control or remote control and monitoring of wayside signals, point machine, monitoring of track circuits, vital communication to other compatible interlocking systems and cab signaling. This system can be used as a centralized or distributed interlocking system. The Microlock 2 rack consists of card file and vital cutoff relay. Microlock 2 Card File The Microlock 2 system card file is mounted in 19-inch rack. Each card file consists of 20 slots. It accommodates various cards like Central Processing Unit Card, Power Supply Card, Vital Output Card, Vital Input Card and Non-Vital Input Output Card. Each card file must have one central processing unit card, one power supply card, and one vital cutoff relay. Slot number 1 to 15 and slot number 20 are used to accommodate non vital input output or vital input or vital output cards. Code system interface card fits into the 20th slot of the card file only. This card is used for centralized traffic control purpose. Slot number 16 is used to accommodate power supply card, but it occupies the space of both slot number 16 and 17. Slot number 18 is used to accommodate central processing unit card, but it occupies the space of both slot number 18 and 19. 24 volts DC fan is mounted on top of the card file. It is needed to dissipate the heat generated inside the rack. The fans are powered in such a manner that the air flows out of the card files. The fan supply is to be delivered from a 24 volts external supply. It shall not be connected to any Microlock 2 24 volts input or output supply in order to safeguard the Microlock 2 cards against any noise generated by an inductor circuit of the fan. Transorb is to be connected between the supply lines to protect the fan supply against any transient voltages. Card guides in the card file slot facilitates easy insertion of central processing unit, power supply and input output cards. 48 and 96 pin connector assemblies are fixed at the back end of card file. The unused slots in the card file are fitted with a blank panel on the front side. Microlock 2 Central Processing Unit Card CPU card forms the heart of the Microlock 2 system. CPU card is accommodated into slot 18 of the card file but occupies the space of both slot number 18 and 19. In this card, the Motorola 68332 microcontroller of 21 MHz speed is used. This card consists of four EEPROMs proms of 2 MB each and total of 8 MB to store executive and application software. Two fast static RAMs of 64 KB each and total of 128 KB to process vital data and four static RAMs of 256 KB each and total of 1 MB to store events and errors. Central processing unit is also provided with real-time clock for storing data with respect to actual date and time. It is also provided with PCM-CIA card of 64 megabyte slot. These cards are used to increase the onboard event recording capability. It has five serial data ports to communicate with peripheral devices like other microlock systems, data logger, visual display unit, maintenance PC, etc. Ports 1 to 4 are used for communication with external vital 
and non-vital systems. Port 5 is used to interface with maintenance PC. Various indications or buttons are available on the front side of the central processing unit card. Four character alphanumeric displays. These are located at the top of the central processing unit board front panel. They show the menu structure status by displaying or scrolling alphanumeric phrases. A, B, C, D, E. These are the yellow light emitting diodes that are reserved for serial communication port status. The LED A when lit indicates that the selected serial link is transmitting data. The LED B when lit indicates that the selected serial link has received a valid message. The LED C when lit indicates that the selected serial link has recognized the address in a received message. The LED D when lit indicates that the selected serial link is receiving a DCD signal. The LED E when lit indicates that the selected serial link has detected a receiver error. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. These are the red LEDs that are user defined in application software. Online. This is a green LED that indicates the normal system operation or successful diagnostics. VPP on. This is a yellow LED that indicates that the flash programming voltage plus 5 volts or plus 12 volts is enabled via boat jumper. Reset. This is a red LED when lit indicates that the system is in reset mode. Reset. This is a momentary push button. It resets the CPU when pressed. Menu LR. This is a three position return to center toggle switch used to search main program menu items shown on the displays. Menu up down. This is a position return to center toggle switch used to search main program menu items shown on displays. Adjust up down. This is a three position return to center toggle switch used to cycle through configuration values to be selected with action switch. Action accept reject. This is a position return to center toggle switch. It is set to accept position to execute or reject position to cancel configuration value that is selected with adjust switch. The main functions of CPU include continuous monitoring of the status of vital and non-vital cards, monitoring the system internal operation for faults and responding to the detected faults, processing application logic based on the inputs received, delivering outputs to drive the external gears, recording the system faults and routine events in user accessible memory, monitoring and controlling the serial communication ports, controlling the power to vital outputs through an external vital cutoff relay, testing the healthiness of the vital input and output cards, responding to central processing unit card front panel switch inputs, interacting with laptop or PC during system diagnostic operations, application software programming or alterations and executive software upgradations. Microlock 2 Power Supply Card Power Supply Card is accommodated in slot number 16 of card file but it occupies the space of both slot numbers 16 and 17. It consists of DC to DC converter and conditional power supply to drive VCOR. DC to DC converter also converts 12 volts DC input supply to plus 12 volts at 1 ampere minus 12 volts at 1 ampere and plus 5 volts at 3 amperes required for various card functioning. The conditional power supply provides plus 12 volts supply to coil. Power supply card serves a vital role in the fail-safe design of the MicroLock 2 system. Based on diagnostic check by central processing unit, power supply card receives 250 Hz control signal from central processing unit and extends supply to vital cutoff relay. This card provides isolated supply 
to the internal circuit. For normal system operation, the power supply to card file should be between the range of 9.5 volts to 16.5 volts DC. However, the nominal voltage should be 12 volts DC. The card file requires a minimum ripple of 500 millivolts peak to peak or 350 millivolts RMS. Current draw from power supply card is determined by installation. Review the table given to learn more. Microlock 2 Vital Output Card Vital Output Card is normally placed in any of the slots 1 to 15 and 20. Each Vital Output Card has 16 outputs. It is available in 12 volts and 24 volts DC applications. An external 24 volts DC supply with battery backup is required for switching the output relays. This switching power supply is going to output cards through front contacts. Any abnormality in any of the outputs will automatically shut down the system by withdrawing control to vital cutoff relay to ensure safety. Each vital output can drive an output device such as any Q-series relay such as QN1 or QNN1. These output relays such as DR, HR, COHR, WNR, WRR, CHYR, KLR, LXYR, in turn controls signals, points, crank handle, level crossing, etc. Since vital output card drives the relay, which controls important auto gears, all the vital output cards are continuously diagnosed by the CPU card. The status of vital output is known from the LEDs available on the front panel of the card. In the vital output card, all the outputs are 750 milliamperes poly switch protected. Each output terminal of the card has a corresponding poly switch connected to it. On the whole, there are 16 poly switches on this card. Inputs to the poly switch are controlled logic output from the central processing unit and switching power supply from vital cutoff relay. Output relay, when picked up normally, draws 16 milliamperes of current. If poly switch does not receive either of the inputs, output is zero. This ensures safety. When the load draws current greater than 750 milliamperes, it moves to high impedance state and hence the card is protected from damage due to short circuit. Microlock 2 Vital Input Card Vital Input Card is normally placed in any of the slots 1 to 15 and 20. Vital Input Cards enable the Microlock 2 system to monitor the field gear status like signal aspect checking by DECR, HECR, RECR, COHECR relays, point detection through NKR, RWKR relays, track status through TPR relays, level crossing detection through LXCR relays, and crank handle status by CHLR relays. Each vital input card has 16 inputs. It is available in 12 volts, 24 volts DC and 50 volts DC applications. 24 volts DC card is used in Indian Railways. Since the vital inputs read the status of outdoor gears, they are normally configured with double cutting arrangement using relay contacts. The status of vital input is known from the LEDs available on the front panel of the card. Optocouplers are used in this card to isolate the noise coming through field inputs from the site. Microlock 2 Non-Vital Input-Output Card Non-Vital Input-Output Card is normally placed in any of the slot numbers 1 to 15 and slot number 20. The Non-Vital Input-Output Cards enable the Microlock 2 system to generate and monitor the status of non-vital discrete outputs and inputs respectively. 
each non-vital input-output card has 32 inputs and 32 outputs. The 1 to 30 outputs are 500 milliamperes poly switch protected, while 31 and 32 outputs are 5 amperes fuse protected. This card is available in 12 volts and 24 volts DC applications. 24 volts DC card is used in Indian Railways. The status of non-vital input or output is known from the LEDs available on the front panel of the card. These cards are required only when MicroLock2 system is needed to interface with conventional control come indication panel. All the control panel buttons like signal button, GN, point button, WN, crank handle button, CHN, siding control button, KLN, and level crossing button, LXN, and key contacts like SM's key, panel PC key, are given to non-vital input section of this card as inputs. Read back from all the output relays is also given as non-vital input to this card. Similarly, control panel indications such as signal aspect indications, point status indications, track circuit indications, crank handle indications, siding control indications, level crossing indications, counters and buzzers, are driven by non-vital output section. Microlock 2 Vital Cutoff Relay The Vital Cutoff Relay, VCOR, is used by the Microlock 2 system to control the power of all vital outputs to ensure safety. When Central Processing Unit detects any unsafe failure, it withdraws 250 Hz control signal to the power supply card which in turn drops vital cutoff relay. When system is healthy, the vital cutoff relay coil receives voltage from power supply card, which is in turn controlled by the central processing unit card. Each card file will have one vital cutoff relay to ensure the healthiness of the system. Vital cutoff relay has six front-back dependent contacts. Each contact is rated for 3 amperes. Vital cutoff relay has a coil resistance of 400 ohms. Its pickup voltage is 5.3 volts and operating voltage is 12 volts DC. MicroLock 2 Review Control come indication panel is connected to the system through non-vital input-output cards. All the field inputs are given to the system through vital input cards. Field gears are driven by the system through vital output cards. Visual display unit panel and maintenance PC is connected to the central processing card through communication ports. All these non-vital output cards, vital input cards and vital output cards are connected to the central processing unit card through system bus provided in the motherboard of bus-based card file. Power supply card delivers power to all the interface cards and also to central processing unit card through motherboard. Central processing unit receives all the input interface cards and process the received inputs as per the application logic and delivers output to the output interface cards. These output interface cards drives the concerned functions. Interface Design Introduction Interface design involves the calculation of various cards requirement of a MicroLock 2 system depending on the number of field gears. This topic illustrates the interface design procedure with a three-root track plan as an example. To start designing, the inputs required are Approved signal interlocking plan from which the number of vital inputs and outputs are calculated. Approved Front plate drawing from which the number of non-vital input and output are calculated. Interface design. Approved signal interlocking plan. From the approved signal interlocking plan, gather the following inputs. Signals. Points. Level crossings. 
crank handles, track circuits or axle counters, block instruments, slots. From the plan, we can derive that there are two distance signals, two home signals, two main line starter signals, four loop line starter signals, two advanced starter signals, two independent shunt signals, two calling on signals. Now, let's calculate the other field inputs which are four electrically operated crossovers, four crank handle units, 18 track circuits, Two route indicators, one level crossing gate. Let us identify the miscellaneous inputs which are two block proving axle counters, BPAC, two axle counters. This completes analyzing the signal interlocking plan. Interface design, approved front plate drawing. From the approved front plate drawing plan, gather the following inputs, push buttons, key controls, counters, buzzers. Each signal will require one signal button as non-vital input. So, 16 signals identified in the earlier section from the approved signal interlocking plan will need 16 signal buttons. Now let us identify the root buttons and common push buttons. They are 7 root buttons, 16 common push buttons. We have identified that there are four electrically operated crossovers from the interlocking plan. Now let us identify the number of single-ended and double-ended electrically operated crossovers. They are four double-ended electrically operated crossover with two track circuits. Now let us count the number of key controls, counters and buzzers, which are four key controls, six counters, three buzzers. This completes analyzing the front plate drawing plan. Interface design, vital input and output cards. As we have gathered the number of field and panel inputs, let us now calculate the number of vital inputs and vital outputs required for each of them. Each home signal and main line starter signal requires one green aspect controlling relay and one yellow aspect controlling relay as its vital outputs and one green aspect lamp checking relay, one yellow aspect lamp checking relay and one red aspect lamp checking relay as its vital inputs. Each loop line starter signal requires one yellow aspect controlling relay as its vital output and one yellow aspect lamp checking relay one red aspect lamp checking relay as its vital inputs. Each advanced data signal requires one green aspect controlling relay as its vital output and one advanced data controlling relay, one green aspect lamp checking relay and one red aspect lamp checking relay as its vital inputs. Each independent shunt signal requires one yellow aspect controlling relay as its vital output and one off aspect lamp checking relay and one on aspect lamp checking relay as its vital inputs. Each calling on signal requires one calling on signal controlling relay 
as its vital output and one COHECR as its vital input. Each electrically operated crossover requires one point normal operation controlling relay, one reverse operation controlling relay as vital outputs and one normal point indication relay, one reverse point indication relay as vital inputs. Each crank handle requires one crank handle slot release relay as its vital output and one crank handle locking relay as its vital input. Each track circuit requires one track repeat relay as its vital input. Each root indicator requires one root indicator controlling relay as its vital output and one root lamp checking relay as its vital input. Each level crossing requires one level crossing slot release relay as its vital output and one level crossing closed checking relay as its vital input. Each system requires one A system on input and one B system on input as its vital inputs. Each block proving axle counter requires one train arrival relay, one down entry vital proving relay and one up exit vital proving relay as its vital inputs. Each axle counter requires one axle counter cooperation verification button relay that is ACCOVNR, one repeater of evaluator relay and one repeater of supervisory relay as its vital inputs. Now that we have gathered the required number of vital inputs and outputs, let us now calculate the number of vital input and output cards. Now calculate the total number of vital outputs. As each vital output card can provide 16 outputs, so total 37 vital outputs will require 3 vital output cards. Similarly, calculate the total number of vital inputs. As each vital input card can provide 16 inputs, so total 81 vital inputs will require 6 vital input cards. Interface Design Non-vital input and output cards Let us now calculate the number of non-vital inputs and non-vital outputs. Each distance signal requires one double yellow aspect lamp indication, one green aspect lamp indication, one yellow aspect indication relay as its non-vital outputs. Each home signal requires one green aspect indication lamp, one yellow aspect indication lamp, one red aspect indication lamp, one approach timer indication lamp and one route indication lamp as its non-vital outputs and one signal button as its non-vital input. Main line starter requires one green aspect indication lamp one yellow aspect indication lamp and one red aspect indication lamp as its non-vital outputs and one signal button as its non-vital input. Each loop line starter signal requires one yellow aspect indication lamp, one red aspect indication lamp and one approach timer indication lamp as its non-vital outputs and one signal button as its non-vital input. Each advanced starter signal requires one green aspect indication lamp and one red aspect indication lamp as its non-vital outputs and one signal button as its non-vital input. Each independent shunt signal requires one off aspect indication lamp, one on aspect indication lamp and one approach timer indication lamp as its non-vital outputs and one signal button as its non-vital input. Each calling on signal requires one signal on signal indication lamp as its non-vital output. Each double-ended electrically operated crossover with two track circuits requires one A-end normal point indication white, one A-end normal point indication red, one end reverse point indication white, one A and reverse point indication red, one A and common indication white, one A and common indication red, one B and normal point indication white, one B and 
normal point indication red 1 b end reverse point indication white 1 b end reverse point indication red 1 b end common indication white 1 b end common indication red 1 b end normal indication white 1 b end normal indication red and one point lock indication white as its non vital output and one point button as its non vital input each double ended or single ended electrically operated crossover with one track circuit requires one normal point indication white one normal point indication red one reverse point indication white one reverse point indication red one common indication white one common indication red one normal indication white one normal indication red one point lock indication white as its non vital output and one point button as its non vital input each level crossing requires one level crossing closed indication one level crossing open indication red as its non vital outputs and one level crossing button as its non vital inputs each crank handle requires and one crank handle indication white one crank handle indication red one crank handle free indication as its non vital outputs and one crank handle release button as its non vital input there are 16 common buttons in this front plate drawing which are non vital inputs each root button requires one non vital input in this plan there are four key controls which are non vital inputs and their respective indications are non vital outputs there are six counters which are non vital outputs there are three buzzers which are non vital outputs now that we have gathered the required number of non vital inputs and outputs let us now calculate the number of non vital input and non vital output cards calculate the total number of non vital inputs which is equal to 50 since vital outputs are given as read back inputs add the number of vital outputs to obtain the total number of non vital inputs in this case the sum is equal to 87 now calculate the total number of non vital outputs which are 137 to calculate the number of non vital cards choose the maximum number out of the number of non vital inputs and outputs in this case non vital outputs are maximum that is 137 as each non vital input or output card can provide 32 non vital inputs and 32 non vital outputs so 144 non vital outputs will require 5 non vital input or output cards interface design other cards based on the number of interface cards calculated earlier the following hardware requirements can be calculated card files central processing unit cards power supply cards erasable programmable read only memory printed circuit boards 48 pin connector assemblies 48 pin address select pcbs 96 pin connector assemblies 96 pin address select pcbs a card file consists of 20 slots out of which 16 slots are used for input or output cards so 14 input or output cards will require one card file each card file requires one CPU card one VCOR and one power supply card hence for this plan one CPU card one VCOR and one power supply card are required also each CPU card requires one E square prom PCB sum of vital input or output cards CPU cards and power supply cards gives the number of 48 pin connector assemblies in this case 11 48 pin connector assemblies is required sum of vital input cards and vital output cards gives the number of 48 pin address select PCBs in this case 9 48 pin address select PCBs is required sum of non vital input or output cards gives the number of 96 pin connector assemblies and 96 pin address connector PCBs in this case 5 96 pin connector assemblies and 5 96 pin address select PCBs 
are required. As we have calculated the number of cards required, let's accommodate these cards into their respective slots in the card file. CPU card should be inserted into slot number 1819 of the card file. Power supply card should be inserted into the slot number 1617 of the card file. The first 15 slots of the card file are used to insert the non-vital input-output cards, vital input cards and vital output cards. If there are any empty slots left in the card file, insert a blank pane into these empty slots. Application Program Design Design Application Program is another form of interlocking circuit. The different inputs required for the design of Application Program are Approved Signal Interlocking Plan Approved Front Plate Drawing Details of other interlocking equipments to be interfaced with MicroLock 2 and Table of Control. From these inputs, circuits and application program are designed. Application program is written in the form of Boolean equations and is stored with a file name program.ml2. This program is compiled through MicroLock 2 compiler. As a result of this, two files such as program.mll and program.mlp are obtained. The .mll file is a microlock listing file which lists errors, warnings, number of bits used, number of times one bit is used and other information. This also gives unique identification numbers called checksum and cyclic redundancy check. The .mlp file is a microlock program or data file which is in the form of hexadecimal code and it is loaded in the memory of CPU card in MicroLock 2 by using MicroLock maintenance tool. All the relays used in conventional circuits are called as bit when referred to application program. The application program is divided into various parts such as program title, interface section, local, input or output, bit definition section, communication link definition section or serial bit definition section, boolean bit definition section, timer section, log bit definition section, logic section. Let us know about the above mentioned sections in detail. Application program design. Program title. Every MicroLog2 program must begin with the title block and name. The name is standard and is placed into erasable programmable read-only memory for reference. The program title includes the following parameters. Warning, station name, file name, designed by, version number, checked by, field testing date, approved by, revision number, reason for revision, revised by. These parameters are defined in the form of multi-line comments which are not taken into consideration by the compiler while executing the application program. Application Program Design Interface Section This section defines the local and serial input or output for MicroLock2 card files. Local Input or Output Bit Definition Section This section specifies the physical input or output installed in card file. The control panel buttons such as signal button, root button and indications such as red aspect indication lamp, yellow aspect indication lamp and point lock indication lamp etc. are defined in non-vital input-output bit definition section. The vital relays such as yellow aspect control relay, green aspect control relay, point normal operation relay, point reverse operation relay etc. are defined in vital output bit definition section. The vital relays such as red lamp checking relay, yellow lamp checking relay and track relay etc. 
are defined in vital input bit definition section. Communication link or serial bit definition section. This section specifies the defined serial links. It also consists of communication status of bits to other compatible system like visual display unit, MLK2, etc. Output bit from one system becomes input bit to another system and vice versa. Output bit and input bit definition sections are different. The order of bit definition shall be the same in both sections. Application program design. Boolean section. The relay such as signal button relay, root button relay, signal button checking relay, and root button checking relay, etc., are defined in non vital Boolean bit definition section. The non vital section consists of button relay logics and indication logics. These logics are written as NV dot assign statement. The relay such as approach stick relay, root checking relay, and TLSR etc. are defined in vital Boolean bit definition section. The vital section consists of complete interlocking logic except button relay and indication logics. These logics are written as assign statement, application program design, timer section, slow to pick or slow to release, time delay for any function is defined in this section. The definition works as condenser resistor combination generally used in conventional installation. Slow to pick is defined as set. Slow to release is defined as clear. There are two timers defined in this section. Fixed timer, which is fixed and cannot be changed during a configuration session. Adjustable timer, specified, set and clear, are used as default for this timer, which can be changed during configuration. Application program design. Block bit definition section. Inbuilt data logger bits are defined in this section. All the bits to be monitored by data logger should be defined in log bit section. Application program design. Logic section. Boolean logic is defined in this section. These logics support the NV assign and assign statements only. The logic section should end with end logic and the program should end with end program. Application program design. Sample logic. As we have familiarized with the various sections involved in an application program, let us now look into sample logic. Panel inputs like pressing signal and root buttons on the VDU or control come indication panel and field inputs like point status, point normal detection relay, point reverse detection relay and crank handle status, CHLR, are given as inputs to the interlocking stage. With the inputs received from the input stage, appropriate logic is performed and the output is generated to pick up the respective relay. Here, the relay is HR. Application Program Design Summary This section summarizes the description of various parts of the application program. Application Program Design Image Summary When an application program is compiled, two files such as .mll and .mlp are generated. The .mll file contains the application image summary. The application image summary contains application image CRC, application image checksum, unassigned user-defined variables, unused user-defined variables, bit usage summary,
numeric usage summary linked summary genesis slave system level configuration parameters wiring card file keying plug a 12a female keying plug connector is included in each slot of the microlock 2 card file it is fixed on the motherboard next to the 48 pin or 96 pin connector each card is equipped with a corresponding 12a male keying plug connector in a specific pattern for the card type prior to installing a card insert keying plugs into the corresponding card file motherboard keying plug connector. The purpose of the keying plug is to avoid insertion of wrong type of card in any slot. Each slot requires six numbers of keying plugs. Wiring, card file, 48 pin and 96 pin connector assembly. Microlock 2 cards are interfaced to external circuits using 48 pin and 96 pin connector assemblies. All cards are used with 48 pin connector assemblies except non-vital card. Non-vital cards are used with 96 pin connector assembly. The connector cable assemblies provide discrete wiring for all inputs or outputs on each card. This discrete wiring is bundled and these are routed through a protective sleeve. Crimp contacts are used to wire all the cards. Wires terminated in the connectors should match with the correct size of crimp contacts. The correct size is 16 by 0.6 mm for 96 pin connector and 16 by 0.2 mm for 48 pin connector. The wires should be crimped to the crimp contacts using the crimping tool. Wiring Card file Address select PCB Address select PCB is used for CPU addressing. It is installed at the rear end of connector assemblies of each input or output cards. The power supply card and CPU card connectors do not have an address select PCB. Separate address select PCBs are available for 48 pin connector and 96 pin connector. For every interface card slot, there is an associated address select PCB. Thus, there are a maximum of 16 number of address select PCBs in a card file. Each address select PCB has six jumper settings, switch 1 to switch 6. Switch 1 and switch 6 are used for power supply connections. Switch 2 to 5 are used as address select bits for CPU addressing. Thus with 4 bits, 2 power 4, that is, 16 addresses are generated with the jumper settings on the address select PCBs. Wiring CPU card CPU card has five communication ports which are used to communicate with other Microlock 2 and operators VDU or maintenance PC. Four serial ports are terminated on the 48-pin connector of CPU card. Fifth serial port is extended on the front fascia panel of the CPU card. Double EEPROM is housed behind 48-pin connector of the CPU card. The CPU card holds a number of jumpers and these jumper settings are to be verified for correctness before CPU card installation at the site. Jumpers J20 and J23 are to be placed in program position for loading the application program. They should be placed in locked position after uploading the application program. Wiring Typical input-output interface. The typical input-output interface includes interfacing to non-vital input, non-vital output, vital input, and vital output cards. 24 volts DC power supply is used for driving the outputs and reading the inputs. 
Separate 24 volts DC power supplies are used for non-vital cards and vital cards. Non-vital input-output card wiring in MicroLock 2 installations, non-vital input and non-vital output cards are used to interface with control come indication panel. This card connects 32 inputs and 32 outputs to a 96-pin connector mounted on the top rear of the card file slot. External wiring is achieved using 96-pin connector and 1 and 2 out terminals. B24 supply is used for reading the inputs and N24 supply is used for driving the outputs. Inputs on cards are activated from a positive voltage relative to battery ground over a range of 6 to 30 volts DC. Outputs are syncing type. That is, if a non-vital output is delivered, the corresponding output bit becomes zero level and the LED connected to that output bit is lit on the control come indication panel. The B24 supply for the LEDs are looped in the control come indication panel. N24 supply for input and output reference is connected to the 96 pin connector at terminals C13 and C29. 16 by 0.16 mm wires are used for non-vital input and non-vital output circuits. Also augmented surge protection box called as MicroLock2 non-vital output filter box, is provided for the non-vital card outputs. It is suitable for 16 outputs only. So, two boxes are required to be provided for one number of non-vital card output wiring. Non-vital board output line filter box to be mounted properly in place of one and two out terminals used for non-vital output wiring. Vital output card wiring Vital output cards enable the MicroLock2 system to control the field gears like A. Signals, B. Point machines, C. Level crossing gates, D. Crank handle, etc. The output card connects 16 discrete outputs to a 48-pin connector mounted on the top rear of the card file slot. External wiring is achieved using 48-pin connector and 2-in-1 out diode terminals. 16 by 0.2 mm wires are used for wiring between output cards, positive end and diode terminals. All negative ends are looped using comb link. Twisted pair wires are used for wiring between 2-in-1 out diode terminals and relay coils. Transorb, that is, transient voltage suppressor is provided across each relay coil to nullify the back EMF generated by relay coils. Relays should be connected between MicroLock2 outputs and battery negative. Vital input card wiring. Vital input cards enable the MicroLock2 system to monitor the field gear status like signal aspect, point detection, track status, level crossing gate status, crank handle status, etc. The input card reads each of its 16 isolated inputs through a 48-pin connector mounted on the top rear of the card file slot. External wiring is achieved using 48-pin connector and 1 in 2 out terminals. All inputs require a double cut wiring using twisted pair cables. 16 by 0.2 mm Twisted pair wires are used for wiring the vital input circuits. Wiring Power Supply Card The power supply card requires a nominal voltage of 12 volts DC for its normal operations. An integrated power supply or with battery backup is wired to power supply card to obtain nominal voltage. The 110 volts DC supply from IPS is passed through DC to DC converters connected in N plus 1 modular hot standby configuration with active load sharing. In this case, two DC to DC converters are used. Outputs from both the DC to DC converters are connected to the terminals A12, A14 and A16. A18 of the power supply card through 2-in-1 out 
Phoenix terminals and also through the front contact of system on relay. Twisted pair cables are used for wiring between system on relay contacts to power supply card connector. The power supply card also has a conditional power supply circuitry driven by a 250 Hz signal generated from CPU card. For wiring, the vital cutoff relay coil and twisted pair cable is used between A6 and C16 terminals of the power supply card connector. Wiring Terminals Phoenix make terminals are used in microlock 2 wiring. One in, two out type terminals are used for connection between non-vital input and non-vital output card to control come indication panel and vital input card to relay rack and serial communication circuits. Diode type terminals are used for vital output card to relay coils. Two in, two out type terminals are used for connection between relay rack and cable termination rack. One in, one out type terminals are used to supply negative voltage to relay coil. Link and fuse terminals are used for power circuits. Wiring Serial communication circuits The Microlock 2 CPU card has five serial ports. These ports can be programmed as master or slave ports. Ports 1 and 2 support an RS-485 standard hardware interface. Port 3 supports an RS-423 standard which is compatible to RS-232 standard interface. Port 4 and 5 support an RS-232 standard interface. Whenever Microlock 2 equipment is connected to a computer or external modem which is powered from a different power supply through serial ports, the Microlock 2 serial ports have to be isolated from the computer or modem serial ports. In Microlock 2 equipment, the serial port common is connected with the N12 of the power supply card. In computers and modems, the serial port common is connected to the earth terminal and this might induce noise or surges into the Microlock 2 power supply N12 through serial ports. By inserting a serial isolator, this noise or surge from the computer and modem serial ports are prevented from entering into the Microlock 2 system. Wiring RS-232 to RS-485 converter The RS-232 to RS-485 converter is provided to support a long distance up to 1000 meters between the operator, VDU computer and the Microlock 2 equipment. It also provides isolation between PC and Microlock 2 and protects Microlock 2 equipment from lightning searches. This converter is used only in stations where the operator VDU is kept at a distance of more than 15 meters from the Microlock 2. Two converters are connected between Microlock 2 and VDU as both the serial ports are RS-232 standard. One of which is connected at the Microlock 2 to convert RS-232 signal into an RS-485 signal. Another converter is connected at the PC to convert RS-485 signal into an RS-232 signal.